Welcome to Kiki and Kibbutz 90 Day Fiance Podcast. My name is Brianna, and as always, I am here with my co-host, Mary. But today, we have a very special guest. Um, I'll let Mary tell you more about Maria Shaw. Yes, so you guys who watched last season with Stephanie and Ryan may remember Maria as the all-knowing, fascinating, French Quarter psychic. (laughs) <laughs> who advised who who advised Stephanie about that no good Ryan? But of course Stephanie didn't listen. So here is the French Court psychic Maria Shaw. Thank you for joining us, Maria. Thank you guys for having me. I, I don't think I've read an introduction like that. I love it. <laughs> Thank that was you. Very exciting, Mary. I have to say, <laughs> dramatic. <laughs> I thought, who's she talking about? <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little more about yourself? That's literally all we know about you. So, Well, um, I write the horoscope columns for Soap Opera Digest and the National Enquirer. Um, I was the TV psychic for um, a lot of different a lot of different shows. I've been on E and VH1. I did the TV Guide Channel horoscopes for a while. I travel around the country uh, with my husband, who's a paranormal investigator, Joe Lawson. And we do a lot of ghost uh, paranormal activities type stuff. I do lectures on soulmates. My specialty is relationships, thus the 90 Day Fiance. And I live here in the French Quarter, just about a block from Bourbon Street. And I've just had a ball on 90 Day Fiance. I've had a lot of people from around the world actually reach out to me and want to get readings or just say hello how much they enjoy the show so it was a really fun experience and I'm, I'm hoping to do more in the future wow I mean we've been Maria, seeing a lot of me. psychics on tv recently have you noticed mm-hmm. I don't know if you've been watching this season of 90 day fiance but Angela Deem is calling up psychic Tracy who the English the the English lady who was also I guess the psychic for Darcy Silva too do you know about her I don't know her no no I she has sorry a hilarious no. accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah she does have a hilarious accent I didn't know if there was an actual psychic friends network or if that was <laughs> I think we're going to see a lot of uh, more psychics and paranormal shows and things like that because astrologically we're in one of the best cycles in 12 years for psychic phenomena about 12 years ago and cycles repeat themselves we had a big rush of a lot of paranormal shows you may have remembered when ghost hunters came out that was a big show and then ghost adventures came out and all of that started to pop about 12 years ago so and that was when jupiter the planet of abundance and growth went into the sign of pisces which also rules like the paranormal and mystical type of stuff so it's back now it's back this year and next year so we're going to see a lot more of psychic types and ghost stories a lot more of that on tv yay that's my favorite stuff yeah yeah mine me too I like yeah I didn't even know that about you to be honest (laughs) so Mm -hmm. can you tell everybody what what is a psychic like we've even discussed this before like what's the difference between a medium and a psychic is it the same thing like can you just explain a little bit more Mm -hmm. Well, a medium a lot of times does channeling work. Uh, I do a lot of mediumship work where I pick up messages from the other side, from deceased loved ones, like Teresa Caputo or right. Sylvia Brown or John Edward, right? So those that that's a form of media, mediumship where they will pick up and channel messages from you know the afterlife. Um, a psychic can pick up, um, uh, they have intuition that they can pick up things that may happen in the future to you. Uh, they'll do a reading, which is where they feel, they just naturally feel things and they may tell you, Hey, you're going to get a new job tomorrow, or don't turn left on this stoplight. You're going to get a ticket. So they'll, they'll tell you things about your future. They'll feel things. I mean, we all have a gift. We all have intuition, whether you call it, you know, gut feeling mother's intuition. Some people have just learned how to harness it. And develop it more and use it. And uh, some of the astrology signs, uh, the zodiac signs that are very, very much more gifted than the other signs are Cancers, Pisces, and Scorpios. And that's because they're water signs and water is more emotional and psychic. So you'll see a lot of those signs in the industry. Uh, and just as and if you're not a psychic or a medium and you, you're born Cancer, Scorpio or Pisces, I bet if you're listening, you're going to say, yeah, I do have some gut feeling. Interesting. Do you need to know something about the person or does that just help you? 
because you asked us for our birth dates and you're going to do readings for us, but is that necessary or do you just kind of, you get, you get the vibes? Well, only for astrology. So and for astrology and to give predictions, I do both. I do. Um, I started out as a psychic and a tarot reader. And then when you're booked a year in advance and you have 22 readings a day, your brain is going to pop. You just cannot keep that cycle, you know, that pace up. So what I did was I started studying astrology because it's more of a science and astrology is great for telling time. And, and when things, you can pinpoint even days when things are going to happen. Like my girlfriend wanted to meet somebody. And I said, on January 21st, 1995, you need to be out and about. Well, she didn't want to put makeup on or get her hair done, but she listened to me and she pulled into a parking lot of a grocery store and another guy pulled in right beside her and started following her around the store. Now, back then he wasn't a stalker. Now we might think so, <laughs> but, <laughs> but they ended up exchanging phone numbers. She ended up marrying him two years later. But I told her, I pinpointed the exact day she was going to meet somebody. So that's the beauty of astrology. Psychics, a lot of times they can't pinpoint the exact day. And, and that's one of the things with some of the psychics that work for me, they'll be like, well, ask Maria, you know, to look at her astrology charts and see when it's going to happen. I just know you're going to get a job, but I don't know when. Yeah. So then, th then I'll look in the charts and I'll find out when the planetary energy is the most ripe or the most profitable for you. That's why I wanted your birth dates. Cause I can tell you a lot more as far as times and uh, make predictions that way. But yeah, I do a lot of psychic work. I, I read the tarot as you see me reading for Stephanie. Um, you know, Stephanie's a Pisces, so she's very intuitive too. But when it comes to her relationships, it's hard for her to read for herself. And I think a lot of times it's hard for us to read for ourselves too. And some of us that do have, conf that, that some of us that do have kind of that little knowing and, and maybe just need confirmation because a lot of people come just for confirmation too, to know that they're on the right track. Yeah, I think I can relate to that. Having, ignoring my gut feelings a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, same here. <laughs> All right. So you said that you would do readings for us and I have never been read and I've never met a psychic either. So this is very exciting oh. for me. Um, so who should go first? <laughs> well, go you ahead and on your birthday. And maybe I'll do a combination first. of psychic and astrology. Maybe okay. I'll do a little bit of both. Yeah, since you haven't All had right. either. What's your birthday? It's June 15th, which is coming up next month, 1966. So I'm about to turn 55. I oh know my I God. look 18, you look, but... You look great. Well, no, Gemma, I know, doesn't she? <laughs> no, I just know yes. how to use the tune up my appearance feature on Zoom <laughs> is the actual truth. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Well, Gemini's, Libra's, and Aquarian, just as a side note before we get started, always look younger. Really? They tend, yeah, Gemini's are the youth, full signs of the zodiac are the big kids that don't grow up. So they have, even though that you can be very professional and organized at times, there's still this big kid inside you. And so I, I have so many friends in their 20s because I do, mm -hmm. I have tons of friends in their 20s. And people are going to say that you're, you're kind of ageless. They don't really know what age you are. And when you're 90, you may look 70. When you're 70, you may look 50. So you're, all, you're always going to age very, very well. Mm -hmm. But I, what I pick up from you is that you have not so much this year. You have a little bit of luck this year. But next year, the first five and a half months of 2022 are going to be out of this world for you as far as your career. I feel like that you had done something in the past that you had had attained a great measure of success. And then you kind of, I don't want to say took time off, but just kind of got comfortable. You just kind of coasted for a while. Now you're coming back into a cycle that's going to peak next year and for the next several years that you're doing, you're doing something even bigger with your career. There's a lot of writing. I don't know if you, I didn't do any research on you, so I apologize. <laughs> I don't know. But there's a lot of Are writing. you serious? Because I am yeah. a writer. That is okay. literally the only job I've ever had is I'm a yeah. writer. Yeah. A lot of writing, but with that writing, it's going to come some teaching too. Okay, so I that's see crazy because I'm starting to give big storytelling workshops and speak to large crowds about teaching other was, people how to tell stories. I was about to story. say your workshops, Girl. Brianna, your workshops. Wow. Yeah. So in 2022, the first five and a half months, you're going to be doing two things very, very well. So one's writing and one's teaching. The thing with the teaching, though, I think it's going to become bigger than you thought. And um, I feel like it could even be international. There may be people from other countries 
signing up for your webinars and things like that. Um, so don't be afraid to, um, I shouldn't say the word afraid, but um, don't uh, discriminate um, because you want to do, you want to get people all over the world. And I think that, I think that you could do that. Um, the other thing is there's a novel or a book that you may have set aside and you didn't complete it or didn't finish it. I don't know if it's already started or if it's in your head, but you will complete that probably within the next four years. You're going to find some time. You can multitask pretty good. You don't think you can all the time, but you can because I see <laughs> going from one thing to another, talking to a bunch of different people, That's running here, do. running there. And all there I was do. a part of you that, um, yeah, and I, I feel like that you're going to create time to finish this book. And it's not going to be like anything you've done before. It's, it's like... I don't know if it's a mystery novel or a paranormal novel, but it's, you know, something maybe like Nora Roberts wrote writes or something. So there's a lot of cool stuff ahead of you. I also see you traveling to a foreign country before, right, right before or right around 2025. And even if you're not really into reincarnation and past lives, you're going to feel like there's a very strong pull to this, this country or this city. And you're going to feel like you've come home. And I see you getting tears in your eyes. So there, there, there's a connection there. And then you're really going to start to believe in reincarnation and all that other stuff. Um, I also feel like there's a friend that you may have been distant from uh, in, in the past uh, where I feel, I don't know if it was a falling out or you just grew apart. That friend may come back into your life before the year is up, maybe even within the next couple months. It's a female friend. And um, I feel like that you you kind of you kind of looked at her and, and said, man, I feel like that I'm doing all the giving. I, I'm always listening to her stuff. I'm, she's always dumping everything on me. And then when it's my turn to speak, she turns it around on her. So I kind of feel like you're going to end up becoming friends with her again, but you're still a little cautious. Um, so you have some old friends coming back into your life, I guess I would say. Um, financially, next year is going to be a good year too. And I also see you putting some of that money into your home. So either you're buying real estate at like a vacation home or you're putting money into your home, something to do with real estate next year, because that's where you make the extra money you want to put it somewhere. But I don't know. I think the writing, the teaching is going to be the big thing for you. And also, I feel like you have a ghost in your house. I feel like there's paranormal oh activity God, in your really? house. Even though it's not, Someone even died though it's not and there's only been one other owner of this house yeah. and she died here. Yeah. Like, I feel, like two I feel, and a half years ago. Yeah, I don't feel it's any any negative energy. I'm not but afraid. I, I feel of more ghosts. of a soft energy, but I feel like you have a ghost in your house, and it, it almost is almost like a protective, soothing spirit. But I do feel I, I'm glad that you said female because I do feel more of a protective, nurturing spirit. So I was going to say a female energy. Um, and if you want her to stay there, that's fine. I you do know, she, want her to stay doesn't, doesn't because want it's her house. I want her to stay. And I've said that since day one, her name was Diana and she owned this place and it was very important to her. So, yeah. So, you know, that she's still yeah. here. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, that's what I, I've always said that I hope that she was here. Like I, I want her to is. stay here. <laughs> she's welcome. I feel that we're, yeah, we're acknowledging her. So I almost feel she's in the room with you right now. She might've stood in the doorway. And then when we acknowledged her, she's coming a little bit closer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Startled me. I don't do that, Brianna. Right please, please. please do, <laughs> do you know if she had cancer? She did die of a disease. I don't know if it was cancer, but yeah, okay. she was ill for a long time and she was, yeah. she was quite old. Yeah. And yeah. so her estate sold us this house. It was, it was a really important place for her. We one mile from the beach. We live in a very magical place. Oh, so, I yeah. love it. The closer to the water, the more intuitive you become. So the more time you spend around the water, it opens up your, your third eye and you're much, much more intuitive. So if you need answers, anybody that's listening, if you need answers, spend some time by the beach or the water. And yes, you could even get into a bathtub. I'm a scuba diver. So that's, that's oh, my big there draw. You go. So yeah. Is, yeah, there we that's go. Nice. Well, that's wonderful. That's I like that because I'm I'm manifest. I'm working on manifesting these storytelling workshops right now, and I just have been saying I see myself talking to huge crowds of people. I'm saying it in the present. We were just talking about that. Exactly. Brianna. I was saying, yeah. So oh, good. So cool. the, this was a good reading for the first time. Yeah. Good. Excellent. Well done. Well yes. Done. Thank yes. you. Okay. Thank you. I knew. Hey, 
I knew that she was my favorite psychic for a reason, Brianna. I told you. <laughs> out of all of these psychics that are popping up on TV, Maria was my favorite one. I told you that. Okay. So, so what did about you want Mary? To give, so, yeah, no, I was sure. going to give her birthday. What's your birthday, Mary? My birthday is um, April 5th, 1974. I just turned okay. 47. Okay. So did you lose a grandmother? that you were close to when you were little? Um, my grandparents passed away before I was born, but I lost okay, my mom. The, okay, it, was she an older mom or did she pass on when she was older? Cause um, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lady on the other side saying she's a grandma. Did she, did you have kids or is she, is she a grandmother? Yes, she is a grandmother, yes. Okay, cause she's identifying herself as the grandmother. She took great pride in being a grandma. Yes. And her, yeah. her grandchildren were, I don't want to say more important than her children, but I think she might have had more time and more patience like most grandparents do. But she's, she's identifying herself, I'm the grandma. So she's coming through and she's around and she's, she's talking about the three kids. Who has the three kids? My sister-in-law. Okay. She's around them a lot because there's one of the three children that is highly sensitive, gets scared a lot or feels like very emotional. And she's around that one a lot to soothe them. But she spends a lot of time with that family for some reason. And she's talking about some time when you burned something. Did you set fire on the stove or did you did you do something where you were cooking and it burned or? I had a fire in my first apartment. Shut okay, that's she's, like a big trauma. Yes, she's acknowledging the, the fire and now she's joking about it. Back then it wasn't too funny. But now she's joking about uh, your cooking or you let, or something. Oh, she must have been cooking or something. She's joking about your cooking. But she's definitely in good spirits. She's with a man on the other side uh, that was kind of bald on the top and had a little bit of hair on the sides. Um, she She's telling him what to do. So it, she's the boss over him. So I don't know if it was her brother, her husband, whatever, whoever, but it felt like that, that she is still dictating what he's going to do on the other side. And he's just going along with that, but she's just coming through today. It's very important for you to know, because there's something that has, that's happening in your life. That's directly affecting you, whether it be in your immediate family or directly affecting you that we won't talk about right here in front of everybody. And she wants you to know it's going to be okay. The outcome is going to be okay. And she's with you every step of the way. Okay. 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 Yep. Um, the other thing that I would pick up is if you weren't doing what you're doing right now, you'd be a very good psychologist and or teacher yourself. Um, there's um, also something very positive going to happen to you the last six months of next year. That is going to be one of the best years that you'll have in over a decade. Remember earlier we were talking about Jupiter going into Pisces, bringing romance and all this. Well, on May 11th of next year, Jupiter, the planet of good luck, moves into Aries and it's gonna stay there for almost an entire year. That is a period of great growth and happiness. Whatever you focus on is where you're gonna have most of your luck. It feels to me like the last couple of years were kind of difficult for you. And I'm not saying every single day, but maybe 2018, 19, 20, you could have been tired, frustrated. Last fall, September, October, November, December, and even into January, I almost see you kind of pissed off at people. There, there was this, this feeling inside of you. That's behind you now. Whatever you were going through the last three years, you're going to be doing so much better this year. And next year is even better. And then late 23 and 24 is your big money year. How you make your money has either already changed within the last three years or is changing between now and 2023. And it could continue to change up into one up to 23. So expect the unexpected financially. There's some good luck coming this fall, but I think 23 is going to be your big money year. You also have a lot of good luck this year to create a larger audience for yourself too. And a lot of your audience are going to feel like they're your best friend. So um, yeah, I haven't watched the show um, that, um, you know, before I, this is the first time I was introduced to you girls, but I, I really feel like how you nurture your, you know, your viewership, they feel like they're your best friend. So I see you getting a lot of, um, 
I don't know, a lot of cards, a lot of letters, a lot of people that follow you that you're going to feel like your best buddies and you're going to nurture that. And I see that growing in the next couple of years. I also see you thinking about doing either some meet and greets or doing some type of an event where you're physically meeting people and doing your show live. Now, this won't be a, a regular thing, but it may be something that you plan to do where you're out in the community or out in a certain area and people come and see you. So it might be like a meet and greet type thing where you're doing a show. But I also see you very, very much involved in trying to inspire people, trying to better people's lives. So this is a fun show to do. But I also see another side of what you're doing um, in the future is I don't know if I want to use the word teaching. I could, I guess, inspiring, helping people be all they can be. So I see you doing something else with your career as well under those themes. I don't want you to get caught up in a title because it's not so much about like a nurse, a doctor, a psychologist, as it is about using your skills. And you have a lot of good skills to inspire people to do stuff. You can bring out the best in people. And I think you're going to, you're going to do a lot of good for people in these next couple of years. Thank Did you. you have a question? No. I mean, I'm she's very quiet. Just, I know. She's so, just, just taking notes. Soaking it all in. Yeah. <laughs> that hit a lot of, you know, nails on the head, as you can say. Wow. Good, good. Yeah. Well, okay. you inspire me all the time and you make me feel like I'm your best friend. <laughs> and you are one of my best friends and you inspire me all the time. Yay. Yay. Group hug. Wow, oh, we have such a love cool. fest going on. Yes, 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 big yes love fest honey. going on. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> it's the oh, circle. My goodness. Well, that was amazing. I yes, really it was felt amazing. that too. I can't believe you nailed the fact that I'm a writer. Like that's literally the only job I've ever had. Pretty much. and teaching. I've I've yes. written and taught yoga and like that. So you nailed it for sure. Good, good. All right. Well, thank you. I predict for you great success too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> Cause you seem good at this. Anyway, so is there like an area of stuff that psychics like is there stuff that you cannot predict that you do not see coming or is it sort of a general like what about world events is it or is it mostly about people well i think we all specialize in something um you know back many years ago when 9 11 hit a lot of my intuitive friends and psychics felt something bad was going to happen but they couldn't pinpoint it a lot oh, of people man. were having dreams of great fires and things i remember two day, uh, day before 9 11 hit I just had to get home and I was, I was in Detroit and I was trying to make my way two hours north to my, my home. And I thought I got to get home. I don't know why I feel so fearful, but I just need to go home. I had this bad feeling. And then the next day it hit. So I think we can predict world events a lot of times through our dreams or through our feelings. Sometimes people get it right on. My specialty though is relationships. So I work a lot with people that want to meet somebody that have met somebody and want to know about the compatibility. Uh, I get a lot of questions about soulmates. And I, I always tell people, if you have to ask, have I met my soulmate? You probably haven't. Because if you meet your soulmate, you're going to know. Exactly. And you can have more than one soulmate. That, that, that's the thing. The preconceived yeah. notion is, oh, I only get one and I missed it. No, you can have many soulmates. You only get one twin flame. And you have a lot of past life connections with people, but you, you could have several soulmates. I have to agree with that. Yeah, I feel like so I know I. that I'm with my soulmate a hundred percent. What so, sign um, is he? He is um, an Aquarius. So of course, two air signs were perfect for each other. Yeah, that's, that's good together. <laughs> and Aquarius um, and Gemini, you know, they'll give each other enough freedom to do what they need to do. We do um, that. Yeah, so that that's good. You guys understand each other. You know, I've had a lot of people say, well, can I make it with this one? Can I make it with that one? You know, he's a Leo and I'm a Pisces. It's not supposed to work. You have to look at the whole chart, you know? And a lot of people don't realize that each person that you meet that's significant falls in your chart in some way and is supposed to play a role. Like I do a lot of faded friends and karmic love readings where I find out by looking at the people's charts, what role that guy or that girl is supposed to play in your life. And if you're somebody that 
is madly in love with this guy and he's only supposed to be a romantic figure, a lover, a playmate, somebody you're supposed to learn to take risks with and just have fun with. And then you try to marry him and make him a husband and he doesn't show up in the marriage house. Once you stop playing and having fun and get down to the, the daily grind of stuff, the relationship is going to fizzle. So you want to find out what role different people are supposed to play so you know how to, to work that relationship to its maximum. So that's what happened when Stephanie talked to you. So, I mean, can we talk about Stephanie yeah. and, and what happened on the show? So she's asking you about Ryan. And um, I mean, it seemed clear to everyone who wasn't psychic that this didn't look right, right? Like, yes, <laughs> and she was too close to it, right? So, so how did that go? I'm sure she started asking you about this before the show started, right? Yeah, four years before the show started, she came to me at one of my psychic fairs in Michigan, and I I uh, told her, she said, was he cheating on me? And I gave her the names of two women that I felt he was cheating on her with, and one of them was the name of his ex-girlfriend. Well, she got on the phone after oh the reading goodness. and said, the psychic says that you're dating I'm not, I, Stephanie does never want me to mention her name to, to not give her any. So I, I'm not going to out of respect for Stephanie, but she said, so I, so he, she said, you're seeing so-and-so and he said, yes. Yeah, so what? So she knew that at that point that he, you know, that he was cheating on her. So then they would break up. They would get back together. I, I told her that this was just a vacation type of a crush that it wasn't going to go anywhere and she couldn't trust him. Um, and then she brought in, um, Harris, who was his cousin, um, as, and, and she had, she did sleep with him when she got mad at Ryan. Uh, we knew about that. Um, and Harris is more charismatic than Ryan. I liked him better, but I told her if these were the last two men on earth, I would pick, um, Harris, but I wouldn't pick any of them. You know, uh, because yeah. there, I, I felt Harris had an agenda. And before the last show aired, where him and baby mama were sitting there cuddling, I had told Stephanie months before, I said, he's got an agenda. I don't know what it is, but something's just not right here. I said, I, I would keep, I would be very careful with both of them. Stephanie's got a big heart. She likes to help people. She wants to give people the benefit of the doubt. And I think sometimes she just loves to be in love. And she goes back and forth with Ryan, back and forth. And finally, she had enough. And then in pops Harris. And I, I think she cared about Harris because they were also friends for a long time. But um, they, they're, it's, they're not together. I mean, it's not going to work. The last I talked to Stephanie, I talked to her last night. But a couple weeks ago, I think she, and I can't say who it is, but she was dating uh, a Hollywood star. And I, oh, I can't, she told me not to say who it was, but she was dating yeah. somebody that had a TV show. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So, um, Mary, there was one scene in the show that you found very oh, interesting. Oh my goodness. When you were giving the psychic reading to Stephanie and Harris while they were in bed together, Harris was so intimidated and impressed by you, Maria. He was literally sweating bullets. I thought yeah. he was terrified. Is, is like, what, like, I felt like he knew you could see through. Him, exactly. Right? Exactly. He was pouring yeah. sweat. Yeah, he was pouring and I, and I, sweat. And it, like yeah. the look on his face was like, oh shit, what is she going to say? Is she going <laughs> to blow up my spot? Like, oh my goodness. Like, I found yeah, that whole scene hysterical. And, you know, I, I kept bringing up the baby mama. Right. Yes. He had a good explanation for it. That was my biggest concern. And, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, they for time purposes, they have to edit everything. But there's a lot of things that you don't see, you know, that we talked about. But I, I do I do remember talking to him about the baby's mom and he was trying to reassure, reassure. Oh, no, we're apart. We're apart. But I just had a funny feeling that he was not. A part. And I told Stephanie, you know, off camera, too, you better check this out and make sure. And she said, no, I talked to Emma, the baby baby's mama and um and uh I don't know I just I just feel like um Harris had a different he was going to flow which whatever way the wind blew if Stephanie was going to give him an opportunity he was ready to come you know so and I think that opportunity Emma was the perfect yeah. word because he yeah. really struck us as an opportunist exactly. opportunity. like he was yeah. running a game but she really did switch course very quickly right like she broke up with Ryan and literally hours later had Harris there. So, I mean, those things never seemed like a good idea <laughs> to me. Yeah. 
but her and Harris had been talking for a while. It's mm-hmm. not like she had yeah. talked to him. They were Got friends. Him. I think I she see. was distraught and called yeah. Harris and one thing yeah. led to another, you know, cause they had yeah. been intimate before. And, you know, so I just, uh, it, it, any time that you're in that situation and you've got all this crazy drama going on. It might even been a full moon. Who knows? You know, you do a lot of things that Who sometimes knows? you regret. <laughs> right. I know I've done a lot of bad mistakes with men, for sure. <laughs> yes. The wrong men, definitely. Me too, and it doesn't have to be a full moon. Right. <laughs> so are you watching 90 Day Fiance this season? Um, I'm I'm going to, I'm going to try to binge watch it. I've been on, I've been okay. uh, doing some appearances. I was up at the Mall of America doing a big appearance last weekend. And the weekend before I had another event and then I stayed at the Monteleone and I don't Yay. think they had TLC. <laughs> so I'm, um, uh, I'm going to catch up with it. Yeah. We want to know your yeah. predictions on some of those couples. Yeah. There's so, so many spinoffs that it's just so know, much fun to watch. Crazy. You know? it I know. It is fun. It's really fun. And we're totally addicted, right, Brianna? Yeah, we are. We <laughs> oh, love yeah. that trash. My life is so non-trashy outside. I need an outlet because <laughs> my job's so serious. Exactly. But so does Stephanie consult you about other matters, like with her business, or is it mostly the, like the relationship stuff, like you said? Yeah, I've done readings for her about her business and given her times to expand and different things to do. Yeah. Um. So um, I, I think that, one of the things I've always said about Stephanie is she is an excellent businesswoman and there are more self-made millionaires born under the sign of cancer and Pisces and Mm. she's a Pisces. Mm. So she's very good with promotion. She's very personable, but when it comes to her love life, you know, she still has, that's her karmic path. You know, she's still got lessons to learn there. And part of it is that she may be too, being Pisces, you're too generous. And sometimes you want to believe people when you shouldn't, you know, but she, yeah, she really is a dear soul. And I, you know, she's doing really good with her business since she's been on 90 day fiance. She did yeah. well before, but it's really boosted it. So we heard a story just the other night though, something about she, her business may be in trouble, right? There's a, um, I don't know if you know about this, but there's an attorney general inquiry into her business over some claims that she's made about her products being able to prevent COVID. Yeah, I talked to her about that earlier today and last night. And um, there is there is nothing that she has said on television. She's actually offering a $10,000 reward for anybody that can come up with anything that was said on, on TV or any claims to that, that her stuff can prevent COVID because she hasn't said it. What she did say was that she has been taking, you know, her, her shots and things and she hasn't gotten the COVID. Um, so something may be open to interpretation. I didn't read the whole thing from the attorney general, but mm-hmm. um, she's put out a $10,000 reward on her Instagram for anybody that can find any sentence or any words that she's used because she said, I have not. So, so she's um, saying it wasn't in any advertisements. She never. Right. So she's okay. So basically it wasn't that she made a business mistake. It's that somebody has accused her unfairly. Yes. That's yeah. the, my understanding. Yeah. Any predictions about what will happen with that situation? I think she's going to be okay because I don't think that there's any, any real proof. You know, it's I, things are open to interpretation just because she yeah. said, I haven't got COVID and I've been using my shots. That doesn't mean yeah. that's her, yeah. that's her perception, you know, okay. but if she's not telling people come buy my product, um, you know, come buy my product, you won't get COVID. She's never right. said that as yeah. far as I've seen, you know, so. Right. So I'm I don't sure think you would have I, I advised think, her against we'll that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Maria yeah. would have advised her against that, I'm sure. Yeah, we yeah. <laughs> 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 Me too, and I'm not a psychic. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. So um, I mean, it was really fun talking to you, and we would definitely love to know your predictions for some of the couples from this season of 90 Day Fiance, two of whom are in New Orleans. Did you know that? I did not know that there was um, yeah. somebody new. I know Jovi and Yara. Yeah, yeah, um, that's who we're talking about. That's oh, who we're I'm talking, talking about. about. Last, yeah. Last, last Any season. predictions? Oh, yeah. Are they going to stay together? Up. What do you think? Yeah, about I, Jovi I, and Yara? I do think that there's a good chance that they they can stay together because the the family is so strong. You know, you have this wonderful Cajun loving family that's very rooted here, and and I think that as long as Yara has 
the family unit, even though she misses her family and she has the children with him. I think she's going to get pregnant again. But the thing for her is that she's a Gemini. She gets bored real easy. Um, and, you know, she said several <laughs> times that she didn't like New Orleans, but yeah. I don't even know if she's actually living here full time. She may be down in Cajun country or down in Homer or something mm -hmm. with the, because he travels a lot. Mm -hmm. But um, I think she's building a great business. She has her own fashion line, I believe, and jackets oh. and things. So as long as she keeps busy, I think she they could stay together, you know, okay. And he's gonna be traveling back and forth. But I think that's one couple that really could stay together. Um, uh, Rebecca and Zied, she's an Aquarius, he's a Capricorn. Now, Capricorn yeah. men are very old-fashioned, strong-willed, and very opinionated. They're men's men. And I think when he gets more acclimated to the states and has money coming in of his own. I think he's going to be a lot more demanding of Rebecca and he's not going to let her lead as much, even though there's an age difference. So I think there's going to be some trouble in paradise unless she allows him to be more of the man in the family, you know, rather than her, the boss. So I think that family could have some challenges. Um, who else do you guys like on, on the show? Um, Brandon and Julia. I was just about to say Julia, mm -hmm. Brandon. Yeah, what do He's you think of Virgo. them? He's oh, a he Virgo, is? so he likes to please. He likes to be of service. He likes to work. Uh, probably overanalyzes things a little bit, overpromises things. She's a Libra. Uh, and Libras are very social. They're very friendly. Uh, but she likes nice things. She would rather stay at the Monteleon, obviously, <laughs> rather than at the Howard Johnson. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so she, she's, and unless he steps up to the plate and pr provides, um, I don't want to say lavish, no. but a, a nicer lifestyle for yeah. her. The sooner he gets out off of that farm, the better their relationship is going to be. I think we all know that. Yes. Yeah. And we have one last one for you, Maria. Mike and Natalie. Oh, Mike and Natalie. <laughs> I had looked high and low for these birthdays. I couldn't find them when I did a show <laughs> last season. I couldn't find them. Somebody on uh, page six, I think, or In Touch Magazine found their birthdays for me. Okay. So Mike is a Scorpio. I thought Natalie was. Natalie mm. is a Cancer. Oh. So, so That's they're, nice. yeah, the thing is they should normally be very compatible to water signs, but here's the thing. They both have so much baggage that they brought in that, that they can't seem to get past trust issues and they're, and everything that she's been through and he's been through with other people, they're bringing it into this relationship. She's naturally assuming he's cheating. You know, she's over the top. She keeps picking at him. She wants it settled. Um, it, this is not going to last. I don't even, I mean, Natalie was here about a month ago walking around the French quarter. She was taking pictures of herself over here at Jackson square. Yeah, so I don't even really even know if they're together. It's all yeah. these pictures. Yeah. I don't think we, yeah. No. And by the way, on Yara, how can anyone not like a Gemini? Talk about the perfect place for a Gemini, New Orleans. Like it never stops moving. Like that's the place to be. And if she I came can, during I COVID. Yeah, she. The yeah, problem right. Is, you know, right. we were shut down yeah. here, yeah. so it wasn't yeah. a fun place to be when you're when you're yeah. stuck, you know, in an apartment. But I uh, might. Be, I want to go back to Mike. He's yeah. a Scorpio. Yeah. And he's very good at manipulating things. If you notice yeah. him, he'll just sit back very quiet, not say anything, and then he'll push her buttons. Scorpios are very good at manipulating things. They usually always get their way, but if they get really pissed at you, watch out. And we saw oh, yeah. that he did that to her on the wedding day yes. when he pulled the rug out and said, we're not getting married. That was unbelievable, mm -hmm. right? Yes. I'm terrified of Scorpio men. I really am. I don't trust them. <laughs> they can at all. be very sexy. They're so, the Scorpio is supposed to be the best in bed. Right. I know. Sexy. They're very mm -hmm. compelling, but they're moody and scary people. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a big Virgo fan either. They're too clean. <laughs> <laughs> Never trust a man who's too well manicured. <laughs> <laughs> or Virgo men will try to fix you. You know, that's yeah, big time. Oh, yes. Yeah, so and that's all will. logic. All logic yes. all the time, too, right? Interesting. Wow, this has been amazing. Is there anything yes. else that you want to ask, Mary? This has been just absolutely a blast. Yes, eye opening, a blast. So much fun. Thank yeah, you so yeah, much. Thank Maria. you enough. Well, thanks for inviting me. I had a lot of fun. I'm glad I had this this little spot in my in my week because I'm really enjoyed it. So I hope to be on again when you get a chance. Oh, well, absolutely. Oh, We'd love to absolutely. have you back. Yes. Take care, Maria. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.